Our final panelist, and then we'll take uh, questions, uh, Steve Bearfeld with the Campaign for Liberty. Steve. Named Lawrence Vance is a gentleman I'm friends with, and with his permission, uh, I've been able to use some of his arguments and some of my own. There's no question that the federal tax code is too long and too confusing. The federal government <coughs> is always looking to increase its revenue while at the same time making us each feel better about paying taxes. That's their goal. Fortunately, uh, there is a shortage sometimes of conservatives, well meaning conservatives, who do not believe that taxation is theft. They're not willing to openly proclaim it. In fact, there are few people, left or right, that are opposed to taxation on principle. Many on the left generally want to use the tax code for their social engineering and income redistribution schemes. Conservatives are generally not opposed to taxes on principles either. They have no problem taxing the American people to fund bloated defense budgets, U.S. military bases in 140 countries, anything related to law enforcement or homeland security, the war on drugs, or various pork projects. Now, the discussion on ta taxes typically revolves around a different method of collecting taxes, as opposed to what the discussion that really needs to take place. How do we reduce, eliminate, and abolish specific taxes? Not cut them, abolish them. There are two specific plans that have been talked about that cover the flat tax and the fair tax. I believe both are a step in the right direction, and I want to go on record saying I am in favor of any plan that reduces the overall tax burden. However, I believe both to be misguided, I believe both plans would fund the federal government at the same level it is now. Regarding the flat tax, the flat tax is an income tax. Uh, it entered the lexicon uh, through a 1981 Wall Street Journal article by Robert Hall and Alvin Rabusha. It was called a proposal to simplify our tax system. The flat tax was re-energized, as many of us know, by presidential candidate Steve Forbes. In 2005, he wrote a book called Flat Tax Revolution. Under a flat tax, everyone's income is taxed at a flat rate, allegedly. Forbes says 17%, Paul and Rebutka say 19%. And the appeal is simplicity. Although there are no tax brackets, there are generally no tax deductions. As Steve Forbes says, you can do your taxes on a postcard size form. The problem with the flat tax is very simple. The flat tax is not flat. However, one actually, no one actually pays 17 or 19%. In fact, taxpayers don't even pay the same percentage. Flat tax is actually a highly progressive tax, even more so than our current tax system. Under the Forbes plan, a family of four would pay no taxes on their income until $46,000. Family of six, about $65,000. And those numbers were just from 2005. They're sure to have gone up. Unfortunately, not only would families not pay an income tax, they still may get a refund. The Forbes plan includes a refundable child credit and earned income credit. Instead of trying to lower the tax burden for everyone in an effort to make everyone pay their fair share, we need to cut taxes and eliminate taxes. It's no consolation to someone in this room who's wealthy or better off, who's stripped of his wealth, because the poor person is stripped by the same percentage. That's not the discussion we need to be having. The fair tax is a consumption tax, and it has without question the most vocal and dedicated proponents. Without question. Fair tax is the idea of a group of businessmen who are concerned with the current federal tax code. It's basically a national retail sales tax. On the final sale, all new goods and services. Some groups say 23%, some groups say 30%. Maybe we'll get into that in a second. All new goods, from cars and houses, to prescription drugs, to food, and services, from operations, to funerals, to rent, to haircuts, <coughs> uh, would be basically be taxed. We would replace the personal income tax, which sounds good in principle, and there'd be no withholding taxes, which sounds even better in principle. The appeal is obvious, no more complex tax code, no more taxes with health and paychecks, no more IRS audits, my goodness. The fair tax even gives you a monthly rebate to offset the taxes you paid on basic needs. It sounds great, but for a plan that promises such a perfect world, the problems are significant. The state rate of the fair tax is far too low to achieve the promised revenue neutrality. More importantly, as was stated, there is nothing, nothing to prevent an income tax from being reinstated, giving us an income tax and a consumption tax. Not only that, to make the numbers work, not only would state and local governments need to pay a national sales tax to the federal government, the federal government would need to pay a national sales tax to itself on all purchases. What do you think the tax rate would be on a battleship or a nuclear submarine, for example? 
Simply put, the fair tax is not fair. For starters, what is fair about a consumption tax? Why is it that people are right, rightfully criticized the income tax are so quick to accept a national sales tax on their hard-earned uh, hard goods and services, basically on consumption? The fair tax perpetuates the fallacy that government has a right to confiscate a percentage of each good and service sold. This is no different than claiming the government has a right to the portion of each one of our income. The consumption tax can and should be regarded as a payment for permission to live. It implies that a man will not be allowed to advance or even sustain his own life unless he pays the state for permission to do so. So says the economist Murray Rothbard. What's fair about the government taking a percentage on every transaction? Doesn't seem too fair to me. Finally, claiming the fair tax is a system more fair than our current system is highly subjective. I mentioned the fair tax includes a monthly rebate to offset the taxes that we pay on basic necessities. This rebate is based on the government poverty level and family size. So although everyone would pay the same rate on the fair tax on consumption, the end result would be that some Americans have most of their taxes offset, some would pay no taxes at all, and some would actually get more money back in taxes. This makes the fair tax an income redistribution scheme under the guise of the tax reform. I believe neither the flat tax nor the fair tax would be a step towards the right direction of substantially reducing or abolishing the income tax. I do not believe, although well, well intended, neither tax plan to be an incremental step towards lowering our taxes. Could be a right step in the direction, however, if you realize the problem is not the tax code, but the idea of taxation itself. Instead, what we have done is shift the debate between how much of our money is taken from the government and the method as opposed to whether it should be. We do not need compassionate tax reform that makes people feel good about paying their taxes. We need radical reform that reduces, cuts, eliminates, and abolishes taxes without replacing with something else. That's right. The real question here is how do we do that? And the answer is simple. You have to cut spending. There's no question, as I mentioned. <laughs> acknowledge that both on the left and the right there are programs that have to be cut, it is an impossibility to eliminate the income tax. No matter how appealing, the real issue is total spending by government, not tax reform. Thanks.